I embarked on the most perilous aim journey of them all. Each day for 10 days, I dedicated a session to only aiming for headshots, in the hopes of leaving my mortal shell behind to become an aimbot. Along the way, I had to overcome my low mouse sensitivity addiction. I had to fight off countless movement players, and had to cope with the turmoil that comes with losing fights that I normally wouldn't have, all because I was aiming for those precious headshots. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, and you're not really fine. The game of choice for this experiment was Apex Legends, and I chose this game for some very specific reasons. Firstly, the time to kill is pretty long, so landing a lot of headshots would be really noticeable. And secondly, hardly anyone actively aims for headshots in this game, outside of maybe with sniper rifles or the wingman. Headshots are often just a happy accident, so this will let me see just how impactful mastering headshots can actually be, compared to regular gameplay. I'm at a point where I've dedicated so much time to learning about and improving my aim that it has reached a great level, but improvements from here cop some severe diminishing returns. It takes a huge amount of effort to see further gains. So I'm here to push my abilities to the limit and get as close to the aiming skill cap as possible. And boy, did we make some exciting discoveries along the way. Jumping into our very first game of the challenge, brimming with promise, I come across my first enemy. All body shots. Great start. This was a very quick lesson telling me I needed to get that crosshair up higher. Next target, I thought I was in for an insane one burst kill. You can see I've got the crosshair right on the head when I fire, but it looks like I pulled down for the recoil way too hard and ruined my chances. Regardless, this was an improvement. At least the crosshair started on the head. With about 300 different squads pushing out one little building, I figured my only chance was to purely headshot these two, landing a great clip and getting me out of that situation. But alas, I don't think I landed a single one. I think I'm running into two problems here. Firstly, I'm subconsciously avoiding only aiming at the head because as soon as I do that, I lose track of where they are. My gun and all the visual effects hides most of their body. And secondly, it was a sign of my mouse sensitivity woes that would rear their ugly head in the coming days. I had a good one clip here with some nice headshots toward the start, but even with my crosser around the face and chin in the second half, I was still only getting body shots. After the failed clutch and that last clip, it really hammered in the idea that I have to aim even higher. Aiming around the chin just won't cut it. Aiming for the top half of the head was the only way I'd start seeing some actual headshots with these automatic weapons. And it worked. Sort of. We had some great headshot tracking with the alternator here until they crouched, which may as well have turned them invisible. I completely lost where they were, and when I found their head again, my arm shield breaking flashbanged me. And I lost them again. The good news was that I learned where the head actually was, but the bad news was that players really have their crouch bound, which was a problem I'd have to overcome if I only wanted to land headies. With a relatively rough start out of the way, the universe delivered this octane to me, which I proceeded to erase with some vault headshots. And while this was a fairly low effort encounter, it was a good reminder of why I was doing this. The DPS is just insane and very rewarding to see. Day 3 came along and really shook things up with the Season 16 patch and introduction of the Team Deathmatch mode. This would be amazing for increasing the number of fights I get into, giving me more opportunities to work on this little project. I started out with a few wingman games, but to be honest, my headshot clicking has always been a specialty of mine and I already intentionally aim for headshots most of the time with them, so I got it out of my system and went back to automatic weapons. With Team Deathmatch available, I was getting a lot more work in. Not always the hardest situations, but at least aiming for the head was becoming more automatic. But all was not well. I had this happen. And this. Which sowed the seeds of doubt. When I started this challenge, I really didn't want to be changing my settings throughout, so I told myself it was just a bad few games, which can definitely happen, and that I'd start fresh again tomorrow. With the arrival of day 4, after a little warm up, I eagerly jumped into Team Deathmatch and immediately had my hopes crushed. The same struggles were present again. 
If the enemy was close or strafing, I could barely hit them. Here you can see that the Gibby kill is fine, he's hardly moving, but the Octane strafing right in front of me is so difficult to keep up with and that's when it happened. I opened my settings. I was on 0.78 on 1200 DPI, which the UI rounds to 0.8 as you can see, playing on the max field of view. This comes to 45 centimeters per 360, which is starting to get quite low for such a high field of view. It's not impossibly low to play on by any means, and to be honest, my mid to long range aim felt great, which worked just fine in the battle royale mode, but TDM quickly revealed my deficiencies with close range tracking and strafing in particular. It also confirmed some earlier suspicions as to why aiming at the head was proving more difficult than I expected. Those smaller aiming movements, like going from the chest to head, were tough to do on this lower sensitivity. And for the record, I think this lower sense was fine for typical gameplay aiming at center of mass, but it had become clear to me that it was restricting my ability to aim for more delicate headshots, and we just couldn't have that. The rest of day 4 was chaos, haphazardly changing settings, desperately trying to find something that worked better as quickly as I could, so the experiment wouldn't be totally derailed and ruined. I managed to get some good kills in, but nothing had really solved the underlying problem of my aim feeling too sluggish and unresponsive. Higher sense felt too fast, and lower sense was just more of the same. I was stuck. I can't say I was happy with how day 4 went. We made barely any headshot progress, and I finished the day not knowing what settings to play on, or if I'd have to scrap the challenge and try again another time. Sitting at the computer on day 5, my morale was in the gutter, and I really didn't want to waste another session. And that's when it came to me. I had been sitting on a script for having ChatGPT tell me how to aim, what settings to use, etc. And I'd try it out and rate the experience. I could pull a two birds, one stone situation with this script. You can watch the full AI video linked in the description after this video, but the quick summary is that it is exactly what I needed to do. I had built up so much bias towards certain sensitivities over time that I couldn't fairly test them out to solve my problem but allowing an AI to make the decisions for me, and I just have to do my best with what was given, turned out to be the perfect way to bypass this bias. Basically, it started me out on an absurdly high sense, gradually lowering it, which helped reset that feeling of anything above 0.78 feeling too fast. And this landed me at one in game, which I played really well on, taking me from 45 centimeters to 35 centimeters. Not a colossal change, but still significant. And this more sensible sensitivity range gave me back the control I was missing, allowing me to track close strafing targets, and also giving me the flexibility to better adjust my aim to the head so I wouldn't have to settle for neck or upper chest shots. I was finding it so much easier to make those little adjustments needed to get my crosshair onto the head. Tracking just the head could still be a little unsteady once they really got moving or started evading, but I could feel that it was possible. I just needed a little more time. And before long, I managed to land this clip. It finally felt like everything was coming together. We quickly blast some headshots into the path, but the Wraith gets the jump on us and we have no shield and we're already being shot at. But with the insane DPS of hitting almost entirely headshots, we still come out on top. Since we have no shield, we got aim punched a few times off the head, but still managed to keep it together. Day 6 was crucial for me. In a way, it was almost like this was the true starting point of the headshot journey. The first 5 days were a proof of concept, where I could see the potential in what I was doing, how difficult it can be, and what was holding me back from making more progress. Early on, I had some easy situations like this crouched fella, which aren't hard to pull off, but it still helps me get reps in for aiming at the head. I could see that I still had this tendency of pulling down to the neck or chest when controlling recoil, and while I managed to pull it back up to the head toward the end, it helped me recognize an area that I needed to work on. You can see it happening here too, where I'd start on the head but pull down too far when controlling the recoil. This next clip is quite interesting, and when I was going back through my footage when editing, I saw it was named Wackiness of Aiming for the Head, which I think fit perfectly. He jumps onto me, strafes around on top of a pointy rock, jumps around, and here I am trying to track the tiny little head, which results in my crosshair wildly spazzing out. This definitely could have been cleaner, but it just goes to show how tricky headshots can be against certain movements. With all the trials and tribulations of settings and relearning the game out of the way, 
it was time to grind and make some rapid progress. These were exciting times. Basically, every kill involved some amount of headshots. And every time I saw a white number come up instead of that nice critical yellow, I'd get this negative reaction. Like you would if you lost a 1v1 or something, like, ah, damn. But this was a good thing. It showed me that headshots were now my default for aiming. It was becoming less of a conscious effort and more just something I'd do reactively. To be fair, this wasn't always optimal. I'd lose plenty of fights or damage that I normally wouldn't have if I were to go for body shots, but that's the price I have to pay for progress. You can see just how desperate I am to hit only headshots, so much so that I miss almost everything with the Spitfire here. But for the most part, the headshots were flowing. The most common problem I was running into here were these situations where I'd start out with great headshots, but the movement would cut it short. Anytime they do something unexpected like crouch or jump, I have to wait a duration equal to my reaction time to know that that's even happened, which was causing me some problems. And when you're frequently versing people like this Wraith who super glides at me, then bounces around like a gazelle, headshots just aren't always going to happen. While bouncing in particular seemed to really suck for headshots, not all movement was insurmountable. I didn't land many headshots here, but the point was that it felt possible. So long as I can read where they're moving in the immediate future, headshots are achievable if I aim well enough. The final day of the experiment quickly arrived and started off with a bang. We got a pure headshot skill with the Prowler, even after they moved to the side. I was also finally shaking the habit of reverting to body shots after the initial few headshots. Even though my reactivity was sloppy here, I kept my crosshair on head height throughout the strafe. No head was safe today, and it really was satisfying seeing the progress of the past 9 days coming together. Especially if I got the jump with an AR or LMG, which have good headshot modifiers. I was dropping them before they could even react. It wasn't perfect, especially against longer range strafing, but I could still see the improvements happening in real time. I only realized quite how absurd this was watching the footage back later, but take a look at this Bangalore's head position. After a few shots, it just disappears. Then she swings it around like she's a boxer or something. And this wasn't just a fluke. Her next spawn, she goes and does it again. You can see her head whips right back, disappearing, then flops down to her chest. I'm not even sure what my point is here, but I just had to share my confusion with someone. Considering I was exclusively aiming for headshots, this was baffling to experience. Anyway, back to it. Body shots were a thing of the past, and while I wasn't landing everything, the DPS of the headshots that did land were easily making up for it. I was even throwing in flashy Kraber flicks whenever I found one, as my confidence for aiming at the head had never been higher. At this point, I really felt like I'd unlocked some aiming superpower. It was like the enemies were just these floating orbs in an aim training scenario or something. And before I knew it, my last session of the experiment was over. After 10 days of exclusively aiming for headshots, this is what I learned, and what's great about this is that these lessons are actionable for anyone to improve their own aim and gameplay. Something I go on and on about is the importance of focusing on your target, not just looking at them. What I found from this challenge was that having a target in mind forced me to focus. I couldn't possibly autopilot while trying to aim only for the head. Even outside of these headshot only sessions, I've found that thinking specifically about where I want to aim at the time to be really powerful, even if it's just center of chest or for me more commonly at the neck. Quick side note, I like aiming for the neck because if you miss upwards, you get headshots. And if you aim too low, you just get more body shots. Next is that if you get the jump on an enemy, take the free headshots, but be ready to aim down to the body when they start moving. You can get so much more damage in this way, and realistically, once they're moving, headshots with tracking weapons are extremely difficult, so transitioning to body shots is the better play most of the time. And finally, striving to do something that's extremely difficult or even impossible can have a profound impact on your perspective, and also better help you understand what you need to improve. In my case, aiming purely for headshots showed me that my settings were getting in the way, and how I'd been reverting to autopilot in FPS games, rather than focusing and playing with intention. Now that the challenge is finished, aiming for body shots feels easier than ever. I've gone from only being allowed to hit this tiny head, to now having a comparatively huge target available to me. 
And while the size of enemies in Apex is the same as always, they feel so much bigger and easier to hit in comparison. Realistically, my mouse control isn't noticeably better after the 10 days, but my aim has never been better. And I fully attribute that to this shift in perspective. I'm better able to use the mouse control I have thanks to this extremely challenging experience. And if you're anything like me and stress about finding the right settings, I highly recommend checking out the AI guided aiming video that happened on day five. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more content like this and I'll catch you in the next one.